Hello everybody, welcome to Codable.com. My name is Ramesh Shankar. Today I'll be talking about one to many relationships in Ruby on Rails. By the end of uh, this screencast, you should be able to create a website such as this. Um, it will accept movies and it will also accept the rental information on move for each movie. So for Shawshank Redemption, as you can see here, you can indicate the borrowed on and return on dates and those dates will be linked to the Shawshank Redemption movie. To get started, um, start a new Rails project, Rails New Movie Rentals. Open up the project in your favorite text editor. I use TextMate here. Start up your uh, web server on your local machine by typing the Rails S command. Create a couple of controllers. The first controller is the movies controller that keeps track of uh, movie related information. And the second one is the rentals controller that keeps track of movie rentals. Next, we create a model for the movies. This model contains the title of the movie, which is of the data type string, and the year in which the movie was released, which is of the data type integer. Now, when you create this model, you're laying the foundation to create a table in the database called movies, and that table will contain information about all the movies that you'd like to store. Now, in that table, each movie is identified by a unique ID field. You do not see the ID field here, in when you create the model but that id field is automatically created for you when you create the table next we create another model this time for rentals so this creates a table called rentals and it contains two fields one is the borrowed on which is of the type date and the second one is the returned on which is also of the type date and it also contains a third field called movie id the movie ID field is called a foreign key. The movie ID field corresponds to the ID field in the movies table and this is the field that links the two tables. Finally, we do a deep rake db migrate. What it does is it actually goes and creates the tables that we specified in our model command. The controller commands have resulted in the creation of the movie controller files, the rental controller file and the model command has resulted in the creation of the model files uh, for movies and rentals and now we start editing our files so we go into the movies controller we create a new method this method will initiate the creation of movies for us so before you create a movie this new method is called it instantiates a variable an instance variable call at movie and um, to instantiate this new variable, um, we have to invoke the movie model and we say, okay, create a new instance of the movie model and pass it to the at movie instance variable. And this at movie will be passed on to the form which we are about to create that will actually let us create the movie. Here we create the new file for the form that will contain uh, the fields where we can enter movie information. We use a form for form helper at movie this is the instance variable that we're getting from the controller new and we're having a space for a text field for the title and another text field for the year even though year is a number it is taken in as a text field and saved as a number we make sure that there is a um, new space a new line entered after each command so it looks a little prettier we add a submit button facility here that's f dot submit and uh, please notice that in some cases we're putting an equal to sign after the percentage in some cases we are not now that's a convention you should pay attention to um, so a little bit more cleanup i'm just putting a header there enter new movie information and that cleans up the form next we need to add movies as a resource in the roots.rb file over here in config directory uh, we need to do that so that uh, we can specify URLs such as um, you know course uh, movies forward slash new um, and and the like 
So here we have movies forward slash new. If for, for that URL to work, we need to have specified the resource uh, movies. And here I'm trying to enter some movie information and create movie. Let us see if this has actually been saved. It will not have been saved at this point because we have not yet created um, an action in the movies controller to save this. Anyway, we can go to the database and check if it has really been saved. I'm going to movie rentals db directory folder sqlite 3 um, dot schema will show you the movies table and I'm going to do a SQL query there to see if the movie has been saved and you can see that no results are returned so it has not been saved so we're going to create now um, an at movie instance variable in a new uh, in another um, method called create here now what we're doing here is we are taking the parameters for the movie that were passed on by the new.html.erb form and we instantiate a new movie object with that and save it in the at movie instance variable and then we save the at movie instance variable in our database with the at movie.save if the movie has been successfully saved then we direct we redirect control to the at new movie path uh, which brings us back to letting the user create a new movie and now you can see that the data has been saved Next, we want to make sure the movies that have already been saved can be viewed by the user in the same form. To do that, we do at movies equals movie.findAll. And in the new.html.erb, we're going to add some extra code to retrieve all those movies that have already been saved and list them. So notice here, we make use of the at movies instance variable, not the at movie. That's just to differentiate the fact that now we're retrieving all the movies that are there in the database. The logic here is straightforward. If the movies are not blank, then for each item in the movies, um, you know, set, set of all movies, just print out the title and the year. And you can see now, um, you know whenever you add a new movie and the year uh, it gets saved to the database and it also gets listed in the bottom in the list of all movies that have been created but we'd like to make this list appear in a nice table so that's the next activity we're going to insert some html code here to make sure the output shows up in the form of a table uh, with a nicely formatted header you know heading and uh, you know borders and so on and now we basically are going to be creating some the you know putting some html text to make sure the table is displayed in a nice way now if there are no movies we want to make sure that we show appropriate text that says no movies yet so that's the else statement at the bottom that's what it ensures that. and the movies are nicely listed in a table format with the title year and so on So that's all for the first part check out part two that comes up next and uh, i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you enjoy part two as well thanks